Welcome to Bickerstaff Bows. I'm Pip Bickerstaff and what we do here is make traditional Old English longbows which are used recreationally all over the world. Going back over 200 years, traditional recreational archery in the UK and across the world has been based on laminated bows. Bows have been laminated for quite some time, including bows found in the tomb of Tutankhamun. So traditionally I think it's safe to say that laminating is not exactly new. We're laminating woods from South America and most of the woods we're using have been in use for at least 200 years. So there is an element of tradition, I would say, in that. Going back into history, we've found quite a lot of archaeological remains of bows. In Northern Europe, there are flat bows where you have the broad, thin limb, which is somewhat different to the traditional English longbow that is much more of a rounded section. We call it a D section. Finds of both have been found literally all over Northern Europe and going back at least 6,000 years. If you look at the bows and where they came from, look at what trees grew in that area and you realise that the people then were making the best bows they could out of the available materials. Very much how we do things today. Recreational archery with wooden bows has been increasing over recent years. We've developed slightly better bow designs by looking further back into history. So if you go back into looking at traditional Tudor bows, look at the way the bows were designed and built, with a little bit of thought and care, we can relearn skills. And that is what we've done here. I first got into making longbows in the mid 90s. This was when there were not that many good longbows available and I was finding that the descriptions of how English longbows performed from a lot of the old archery books just didn't tally with the bows that people were shooting. The bows that people were using tended to be a bit stodgy, a bit wooden, lacking in performance and they didn't feel particularly nice to shoot. So I started to make bows thinking that this can't be right, there must be a better way of doing this. 
And gradually, I started to make bows that felt a lot smoother and sweeter to draw. They didn't stack and they performed well above average compared to the other bows that were available. And some quite well-known bow makers of the time were making bows. My father had a couple and I produced a bow that was more than 10 pounds lighter than the bows he was shooting, but would outperform them for distance by a good 20 yards. So clearly I was getting more energy into the arrow from a much lighter bow. So I was getting closer to perhaps how bows used to be built. What I'm looking at is we are trying constantly to improve the quality of the bows that we produce, trying to improve the consistency and reliability, and we have established a reputation for producing bows that perform well and last. We have lots and lots of feedback from Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, you name it, pretty much anywhere that archery is done we have supplied bows to. One of the most important aspects of archery, of course, is we're supplying bows that people shoot. The whole purpose of the longbow is not to hang it on the wall, to have something that just looks good. You want something that people can actually take out there, shoot and enjoy shooting. So one of the things I spend a lot of time doing is helping to build and develop traditional archery shoots in this country and abroad. And we have a lot of friends all across the continent that we meet up with at various different shoots where traditional bows are being shot. And from my point of view, purely personally, there is no greater pleasure than looking down a shooting line where at least half of the bows have got my name on them. That, I feel, is an endorsement of the fact that we've got something right.